after season one, I I made another true crime podcast called Atlanta Monster about the Atlanta child murders in the 80s. And it was a limited series, 10 episodes, and it was a investigative thing again, but also sort of a history lesson in terms of, you know, you know the what was happening back then in the 80s and, you know, culture at the time and racism and all those things. And I eventually got Wayne Williams on the phone. And so the last half of the show is me talking to him and him basically trying to convince me why he isn't the Atlanta child murderer. Who is Wayne? Oh, he, he, so he's the guy who was arrested for the okay. Atlanta child murders. And he's definitely the guy who killed those kids. Um, but he would tell you otherwise. And there are some things that are weird that don't add up but the guy is a pathological liar he's a psychopath and i talked to him at length for months in person or on the phone on the phone and i was able to eventually get to the point where i was going back through all the tape i had and could trip him up on his lies oh, and wow. sort of uh you know hopefully put to rest at least for me that this guy is a liar you know, just because this looks weird over here doesn't mean that he didn't kill these 15 kids over here. So what is the story? What, what is this guy's story? If you could like sum it up, like give me like a elevator yeah. pitch of what this guy's all about. Well, what the, and like the case of the whole Atlanta child murders. So in the early 80s in Atlanta, uh, black children were going missing and turning up dead. And it got to the point where they realized that something was happening. These weren't, these were all connected in some way. And there was likely a serial killer. And this is kind of... And the buys were being left out in the public? Yes. And yes. And they were all kids. They were all black. And going missing from, you know, uh, the poor neighborhoods. And eventually they find their suspect. And his name is Wayne Williams. And he was a black guy. And he worked in the music industry. Uh, that's a loose description. <laughs> um, but he recruited kids and it was like kind of trying to make his own band, right? Like a Jackson 5 kind of thing. And so he had access to these kids and they eventually, the, 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 the smoking gun for Wayne was when they went and searched his house, they found these carpet fibers that matched several of the bodies of the victims. And normally you'd say, okay, a, a carpet fiber, right? Like, everyone has carpet. Why is that not someone else's house? Well, it just so happened that this particular fiber that they tracked down all the way was so incredibly rare that it was in, like, maybe one or two other houses in the state. And so the likelihood of these fibers being on these victims collectively on its own is crazy, but for, them, for, the, for those fibers to also be in Wayne Williams' house, what are the odds? And so that was really kind of how they were able to close the book on uh, Wayne Williams being the Atlanta child murderer. He only went to jail for two of the murders, but a lot more are, are attributed to him. How many? Uh, I mean, s some say as many as 30, but I think it's probably realistically um, 15, 17 of the kids that he, he killed. Um, I think that some of the other um, kids on the list, I think that there were other circumstances that um, that were weird, but don't really match the motive and the M.O. of the other murders. And I think those are just outliers, and there's probably a, a bunch of different reasons for that. Um, and so it, he kind of likes to look at those cases that he, maybe he didn't actually commit and say, see, I didn't do that. And it's like, yeah, you probably didn't, but you killed all of these other kids. And so it's a really bizarre thing. And I just got so tired of talking to this guy. It was exhausting. And yeah. eventually I had to block his number from, from jail from all my phones after I kind of you know, let him hang himself. What was his background? What, why, how did he get involved in this? And had he been in and out of jail before? Was he, what was his motive to doing this? That's always been a big question mark. And I think that what the general consensus is, and it's never really been proven, but it seems like there was probably some sexual nature to the crimes. Um, I think that, you know, there was probably some sort of pedophilia type, you know, either motivation or something where he 
was attracted to these kids, and that's also why he did the music stuff like that. And mm. he just started scooping them up, and maybe he did something one time and got away with it. And I think he liked the fact that he was able to get away with something so t- terrible. And he was kind of one of those guys who was a whiz at the time in terms of like radio technology and almost like a, a you know, chasing the news. And he even sort of liked to go out to crime scenes himself and as like a independent reporter. And so he, I think he got off on the fact that he was killing these kids and they were all trying to figure out who it was and he was still doing it and getting away with it. You know, it's hard to, there's no good reason for him to kill a kid, but I think that that's probably in his head what he got from it. Was there any sort of like racial motive involved? And you say he was black and he was only killing black kids. Did he ever, what did he say about that? And that's, that's the weird thing, right? It's like, you know, I think that that shocked a lot of people that it was a, a, a black guy who, who killed these black kids and I bet no one expected that. And but even the police themselves, and, and they had said early on, like the FBI profilers, they were saying, you know what? I don't think that a white guy could have done it actually, because if a white guy was going in and snatching kids from these neighborhoods, that would be noticed immediately. Right. And so they had a hunch that whoever this person was, whatever their color was. He was able to blend in with his environment and go completely unnoticed while committing these crimes. And so that was kind of a leading a factor in terms of the profile they were building of the suspect. And yeah, that, and to a lot of people, it's still very shocking. I don't know if it was a race thing. I, I think he was just taking advantage of the kids who were closest to him when this was going on was there sort of a media frenzy around some sort of like oh yeah ra- racial narrative around it it was huge i mean it was also in the 80s when you know racism is uh, alive and well at that point right and you know it was at a time where it was you know super charged and these black kids were going missing and it seemed like no one was doing anything about it and then it eventually became a national news story for some of those same reasons and it was really the you know the Georgia police the GBI the Atlanta police they wanted this thing to go away it was not making Georgia or Atlanta look very good mm. they're like we need to figure out who the hell this guy is and put him behind bars and so they really pulled out all the stops and they eventually did catch this guy but at the time it was a a huge story that had a lot of implications and it was a, a big shock when Wayne Williams turned out to be the killer. <laughs> 